so today we are building our hose bibs. Uh, we realized that when we're attaching PVC underground irrigation line into PVC above ground irrigation line, a couple things happen. The above ground PVC is very fragile after a lot of solar radiation, uh, as well as after a couple of the big freezes that we've had, they become very susceptible. So this is gonna be our process. We're using um, stainless steel uh, instead of galvanized because the stainless steel uh, from, um, we'll put it on, we'll put the link on, but the, I believe it's supplyhouse.com. Um, that's where we get all of our stainless steel parts. It's gonna last forever. It's not gonna corrode that we have problems with the galvanized and it's not gonna become so fragile, which we have the problems with the PVC. So our assembly is going to be uh, one spigot, uh, one three quarter inch elbow. I believe this is three feet stainless steel threaded. One more elbow, a 12 inch nipple. Uh, with a stainless steel female to female threading on both sides. Then we connect it to a six inch PVC nipple. So there you go, still trying to get all the names correct. Um, what this allows us to do is have a very rigid above ground piece that's going to be connected to a four inch by four inch uh, piece that's concreted in. And then this final nipple will be able to connect into whatever our underground PVC line is. So our PVC line that's coming from the well is a one inch. So we'll go ahead and connect it to this one inch for that. And our line coming from the rainwater collection is a one and a quarter inch. So we'll connect it to the one and a quarter inch there. Any and all of these threaded fittings will either get the pipe sealant and anytime you're using this pipe sealant, just make sure that you're trying to be as clean as possible with it because it can get on everything very quickly. So we're just gonna put a dollop of it around this edge. Um, okay, now we're just gonna smear that in. Nice and evenly. Clean it off becomes it become before it becomes a catastrophe. And for this one, we're going to go ahead and put it into our three quarter to one inch. So three quarter inch threads. <clears throat> to one inch fit. And when we're done, so that it looks like we're nice professionals, we're gonna go ahead and just clean that off so that we have a nice clean threaded uh, seal. Okay. Whenever we're assembling these, we'll show in just a second with the vise how we assemble these stainless steel parts because they take a lot of effort. Um, but we're also going to need to know uh, the end assembly, how it's going to connect to the PVC. As you can see with this one, we have the spigot going the same direction as, as the base foot of it. Um, if that's the appropriate direction, then that's great. As you can see over here, for our context with this specific site, the spigot is going to back up to the main PVC line. So we have the spigot on this side and the actual PVC connection uh, 180 degrees opposite of it. So right here you can see that we've almost assembled this one. We have the PVC nipple to the stainless steel connector, to the 12 inch stainless steel base, to the uh, elbow, up to the three foot stainless steel piece. We still have 
the threading to put on here. With the threading, if you haven't done this before, it's important to keep as little off of the loop as possible. This is the Blue Monster PTFE thread tape. And we're gonna look at which direction we're going to be threading this. So if you thread it opposite to the direction that this is actually going to screw on here, then it's just gonna bundle up and cause a big mess. So when you look at this thread, go ahead and take your fingernail and just start to slide it around. Okay, when I'm sliding it around in a clockwise motion, it's sucking it up and moving up the threads. If I move in a counterclockwise motion, it kicks me off of the threads. And so that's not the direction that we wanna put this. We wanna put this in a clockwise motion. If we put this in this direction, it becomes slightly unwieldy to manage because there's more coming off the reel than we can manage. So we want to be moving it in a clockwise motion nice and reeled up nice and tight we're gonna hold this nice and tight we're gonna grab that end and now when you pull it tight you can see that the threads become visible so one two pull it tight three pull it tight four pull it tight five tight six tight seven and generally everybody has a slightly different way about this but personally i learned always using six or seven wraps of this and now before we put this on and just start turning it we're going to back thread it And you can hear and feel when it uh, sna snaps over that threading. And then we're gonna start actually threading it. The reason for that is if you just grab a hold of it and start threading it, it's possible that you can cross thread this. All these pieces are relatively expensive, hard to get, had to ship from somewhere. So we don't want to, uh, we don't want to cross thread them and, and mess them up. So we go ahead and get it started. Now we're going to take this over to the vise. Okay. A couple things with the vise. Let's make sure that the vise is locked in place. This one has had a, a good bit of effort put into it today. Vice is going to hold these elbows easier than it holds the pipe. One thing that's easy to do while you're doing this is bend this post. So if you find yourself starting to bend it, let's just bend it back a little bit. And just using that mallet, I'm just going to tighten this as much as I can. And now I'm going to take our pipe wrench, sink it down as much as possible. And to make this as useful as possible, I'm going to get as high on it as I can. What you'll notice is if you put the wrench up here, you're gonna be putting a lot of effort into it, causing a lot of damage on the pipe and not getting much force. So what we wanna do is get above it, get that really well seated. And once it's seated, we're just gonna give it a nice turn. 
And then sometimes it pops out. So this is a this is a gentle but forceful process. If you find yourself whacking at it, breathing hard, cursing, then you're doing too much. Just do less. Still straightening that. So the pipe wrench, we try to, whatever's connected into the vise, get the pipe wrench as close to the vise as possible. You're gonna have a whole lot more leverage right up against the vise, as opposed to way out here. You have a whole lot more pipe in the system that's gonna have the tension and, and convey that tension all the way to the vise. So get it as close as possible. And then ideally, just get your weight over the top of it Slide it back, keep it nice and seated with your thumb. And it's just a nice, constant pressure at that sweet spot. You can see I'm not trying to go all the way here and then yank on it, because that's not very efficient for me. I'm just gonna find that nice, efficient spot for us, and we're just going to work it. Okay, and we're just going to continue that until either we can't continue it any further, or those threads are completely buried. Uh, and last thing, we're just going to make sure that this is in line. I'm going to need to take this a little bit further. And you can see it is supposed to take this much effort. So right now, if I stopped, my spigot and my stem are going to be facing the same direction. I need the spigot and the stem to be facing 180 degrees opposite. So we're going to just work on this a little bit more. Make sure that's nice and fit. there. Make sure it's seated really well or else it's going to chatter and damage the pipe. Okay, now we release this. Okay, I'll straighten it a little bit. You can see now we have our, our base, our right angle, our three foot stem, up to our right angle, up to our spigot. And then the next piece of this is going to be connecting on our insulation, like that, and our top one inch angle like this and just going ahead and taping them down with a 20 millimeter tape so that this is your final end product and we can glue this into our pvc we'll put a four by four post concrete it in and use some buckles that we'll show later to hold this in place so it's always good to witness someone else's mistakes. So hopefully I can make them so you don't have to make them. Uh, whenever we cut these, we really gotta make sure that when we're cutting that pipe, we don't just slap it on here and clip all the way through and cut it. Because what happened here is we get, 
three quarters of the way through and then it snaps because it's brittle. And then you try to shim that little extra off and then you don't have enough to fit in here. So if you can see, if we tried to go ahead and put this fitting directly in, now we don't have enough uh, space to do it. Uh, so lesson learned, luckily we have uh, a slip fix. Any type of PVC, you want to put these on at the same time as cleanly as possible because they're not just a glue, they, um, they actually dissolve the PVC a little bit so that it, it reseals and it welds it together. So we don't need to let the PVC primer dry. We wanna get them both on there. And seat it all the way. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and compress this down. And we're going to see that it's going to go, we're going to need this much space. Uh, right here. I'm not going to make the same mistake. and wipe, wipe the, the mud off of this end so you have a good purchase. Okay. And we're gonna get both of these ends ready to go in. Okay. And our spigot's gonna go on. So let's go ahead and do that while everything's potentially a little bit wet. This red hot dries pretty fast. Now let's go ahead and make sure this is level. Okay, that is level. And now let's go ahead and just backfill this. Yeah. 
little bit more. And once we make sure that this is level, as well as this, it's also level. Okay. They're all 90 degree fitting, so they sure should be. Then we'll just let this set up and we'll come back here and we will concrete this in shortly. Okay, so now our, our final piece is our uh, timer, filter, vacuum breaker, and pressure regulator assembly. So this is just one of many timers. Uh, this is the one that we typically use. It's a Hunter BTT200 uh, Bluetooth. You can use a phone app with it, and it has two zones. Uh, the green Rainbird timers are also great. If you don't want to use an app, you can just pick those up from Home Depot. Uh, we do not get paid anything from Hunter or Rainbird. We just find them particularly uh, useful. So any threads, we're going to need to put Teflon tape on. And this is going to generally be our order of operations. So we're gonna have the timer connected directly to the spigot with uh, Teflon thread. Then we're gonna have a filter. Occasionally we might need to take this off and knock this filter out if you have a, a really poor water source. If you find that this starts to get real calcified, uh, it probably means your entire drip irrigation line is also calcified. In the hill country of Texas, we have very calcium rich water and very hard water. So one thing we found to keep the longevity of the system going is using a fulvic acid called Connector O that we can inject into the line and leave it for 24 hours before we flush it through the line. And it'll release all those calcium particles and, and it'll just push all that fulvic acid right onto the plants. So that's a good piece for longevity. Um, but for now, we're gonna go ahead and connect um, the timer to the filter the filter to a vacuum breaker. So this is a Everbuilt hose bib vacuum breaker, three quarter inch from Home Depot, found in the plumbing aisle. What this does is especially if all of your irrigation is above your house or your water source, you're gonna push all this water into that those lines. And then after it's possible that if you, uh, when the timer goes off, it could force all that water that's now contaminated back into your hose or back into your house water main. So we always wanna have a vacuum breaker uh, because all that water is gonna spray out the sides of this for just a few seconds to discharge the, the suction on that line. Um, and it's gonna keep everything nice and clean. So, and then finally, our pressure regulator. A lot of water sources come out at 60 PSI. And if you only have a little bit of um, drip irrigation out, it might be too much pressure and it might blow out your, your irrigation system. Um, so we typically put this uh, 40 PSI from Dripworks uh, pressure regulator on it. And then finally, we're gonna put our female hose thread onto that and that's gonna connect into our three quarter inch main line. And so that's gonna be our timer, filter, vacuum breaker, pressure regulator, uh, and then threaded assembly. And so every client, this is kind of our system uh, and it seems to work pretty, pretty well. And so we'll go ahead and put two of these on here and it'll just take me a while to go ahead and thread everything. And again, anytime that we're threading, we wanna make sure we're threading the direction that we're going to be uh, spinning this on, which is going to be counter I'm sorry, it's going to be clockwise. So we're gonna hold on to it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Pull it nice and tight, tear it off. And then again, especially when you're threading a metal part onto a plastic part, it's very easy to cross thread it and then you can no longer use it. So anytime that we connect something, make sure you're back threading it until you feel and hear that click. 
means that the threads have lined up. And then we can just very slowly start to cinch that back on. And if you get resistance, just stop so that you don't cross thread it and then you have to buy a whole nother timer. Uh, and so that's, this is gonna be our process. Just any threaded parts. One last piece on these threaded parts, which is confusing for a lot of people who haven't worked with plumbing, is there is hose thread and there's pipe thread. So hose thread is going to attach directly to a water hose. Those threads are a little bit wider. And if you get pipe thread, those pipe threads are gonna to connect to PVC. So you cannot put hose thread onto pipe thread. It's gonna strip all the threads and it's not gonna work very well. So make sure when you're ordering these parts that it says HT hose thread, and that's gonna be what you want. If you're working with PVC directly, you would want pipe thread. So a lot of, a lot of terms to make sure we're getting the right pieces and parts. Uh, Dripworks is pretty much where we get most of our parts and anything that they don't have, we go through Texas Irrigation Supply. And again, I'm back threading it. I feel that click. If I'm dubious at all, just back it up and try again. Look and make sure you're not cross-threading anything. Okay? But that's our that's our hose filter timer assembly.